Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So I'm working my way through my list of viewer requested videos and today is one that I'm not looking forward to do but we'll just get on with it. So it is, can you possibly do a video of how to properly set up a SAM site? What units are needed? How far away they can possibly be? How many launchers per each radar truck can we possibly have? And how do we know it will work? And this requires a lot of understanding about the actual SAMs themselves to figure this out. So we'll go into DTS, we'll have a look at this. Uh, we'll start with the Russian side, because the Russian side I just know off by heart, I've been using them for years. And then we've got what, we've only got two or three on the NATO side, and we'll have a bit of a play with them. And we'll probably expect the same kind of logic from uh, from ED of how they're set out. Now, if you're looking for a quick, easy video, video of just how to set a SAM site up, this is not it. This is going into the technical limits of the SAM sites in DCS. I've got another four minute video just showing how to set a working SAM site up, and I'll link that in the description of this so you can go and see that if you want. But today we're looking at the more complex stuff. The other thing to note is, and I have to be careful not to get myself in trouble here, that there are some bits of the SAM sites that at this point, July 2019, are not working right, and I'll show that to you. I haven't been working right for about six months, I noticed. So I will point that out, and that will probably be fixed slash changed in the future, but I just want to make you aware of that. Now, regards which SAM sites we're going to cover. We're going to cover the multi-unit SAM sites. So the SAM sites where you need more than one type of vehicle. So we're not going to cover like an SA-19, for instance, which is just one type of vehicle. We're going to cover the vehicle, the sites that require, you know, a launcher and a radar at least. So I'm going to boot DCS up and let's get going. Okay, we're in now. Let's select a suitable piece of terrain. We'll just go off the map so that we've got no terrain to get in our line of sight. We're going to put our cells in will be one of these okay and next we'll look at the type of SAM sites we're going to look at today so um, we're going to look at today the uh, what have we got what have we got we've got we might have a look at the rapier we've got the hawk we've got the patriot SA-10 SA-11 um, SA-2 SA-3 SA-6 and I think that will be a lot. So we'll start with the basic default SA6. This is where I will start. It, it just works wonderfully. I never have any problems with SA6s. So we're going to go straight in. We're going to have a search radar. And as part of the group, remember to place a SAM site. They all have to be part of the same group to uh, work with each other. So it's a very simple unit. It just has a search slash track radar and a launcher. And that there is a working SA6 site. We all know that's going to work because they're in the same group. And we've got the minimum requirements, which is at least one launcher and at least one search slash track radar. So the first part of the question is, how many launchers can you have per track race search slash track radar? The answer is infinite. As far as I can find, there is no uh, limit to how many you can have. And I've tested this even with a simple SA6 flown up and down. And eventually, all of those will get used. Now, as to how they will get used depends on the unit. If it's a simple single track radar like this that can only track one target at a time and fire one missile at a time, then it'll work through these very slowly. It'll work through that one there until it's out of missiles, then that one there until it's out of missiles, and it will take about three hours until they've all gone. Well, saying that, it'll actually choose the launcher that's closest to the target, I've usually found. So, no limits there. Um, now, I suggest you don't try stuff like this. What you will do is just end up killing DCS, and you only have to reset the game. It's just not designed for, for you know silliness at the end of the day. It's not designed for people like me. So, the next question was... Um, how far can the, so just turn it down to a sensible number, how far can the uh, units be away from each other, away from the radar to actually function? And the annoying thing is, I mean, it, it, that depends on the type of unit. So you have to understand exactly how this works. So what we know is that in an SA-6, so just apply the simple logic. In an SA-6, that's a launcher truck. That is connected to the master unit, which is the search track radar by, I'm guessing, radio. I don't know enough about SAMS to really know, but I think we can guess radio. And that radio has a usable range in DTS for an SA-6 of, I think it's 25 nautical miles. So what I can do is I can get this guy, and I can put him... I'm going to put him 25 nautical away. So if I put him kind of 22, somewhere around there... Uh, how far is that? Whoops. Okay. 
out there somewhere just below 25 uh, then this will be able to link to the master unit there okay um that's all i've got to sound that i think so what i'm going to do is get my plane fly over and just show it to you off we go let the search radar wake up it's woken up let it track us it's tracking us i've got a missile out already and it's from oh blast i can't um i forgot to turn the map on uh, which means I can't show you, but I can assure you, I uh, might be able to prove it, oh, no, I can't zoom in, I can assure you that is the one that is uh, about 20 miles from the launcher, um, uh, and the beautiful thing about that is that, um, and I, we're doing this in coffee campaign at the moment, so we have the track radar there, so that's what we see on our RWR, but we have the launcher, 25 miles off in the direction that we think the hostile planes are coming from so that when this my airplane is 25 miles away from the the radar we think oh okay the radar is 25 miles away uh, the tam's 25 miles away we're in no danger when in reality the launcher is actually right below us there and that can launch straight up to us it's a really nasty thing you can do with sams it is we have a proper military advisor on our crew now in gr who studies um, the SAMs around Moscow. And this is what the Moscow SA-10 suites have done. They've got the radars nearer to Moscow centre uh, of the various suites. And then they've got the actual launchers at, out kind of surrounding Moscow, like, I don't know, whatever it is, 40 miles out or something like that. Uh, so it's a really nasty way of doing things. And obviously that's how they're designed. So you can do things like that. So to answer the question for the SA-6, you can have them just under 25 miles away. I haven't tested line of sight yet. I don't think line of sight... Um, uh, affects the link between that and that. I stand to be corrected. I haven't tried putting a mountain in the way yet. Maybe we'll do that later. But that's that question answered. Um, next, let's expand. So we want to get a bit more clever. Let's just take him back. Let's just take him back here, look. And then the next question is how many search radars or how many, you know, this certain track radars can you have? The answer is as many as you like. And this is where DCS gets really clever and it all gets a bit confusing. Again, I could put 100 of them down. Don't do that because you'll just kill DCS. You know, it's, again, it's not made for stupid stupidness. Um, so what we can do is this is all part of the same unit. This is the same SAM system. They will talk to each other, communicate with each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this radar here down here. And I'm going to grab one of the units, uh, one of the... Um, launchers, it doesn't matter which, it automatically detects which launcher is in a usable range, and so I'll put that, you know, out here by, uh, under, as long as it's under 25 miles, it'll be fine, and this is going to act, it's going to communicate with this guy, but be a separate entity, so I'm going to be well outside of the radar detection range of this master radar here, and this secondary radar here will act independently, right, pretty cool, right, um, and we're going to prove that noise. And this secondary radar can be as far away as the primary radar as you want. I think you can have it like, you know, well, as far as you ever, ever need it away. It's going to act. It can act independently. Uh, I forgot to turn that. I just realised I forgot to turn the bloody um, map on again. Let me just uh, go and do that. Map on. Make myself immortal in case I need to show you some stuff. Off we go. Okay, so we're going to go um, just straight forward. That's the secondary radar that's started up. That's tracking. And it's fired a missile, so it's acting as its own independent unit, even though we're outside the range of the primary search radar there. And if you want, I could put another set there, and another set there, and another set there. Okay, so that explains the distance we can have between the units, and the fact that we can create these subgroups like this. Um, let me just go quickly back to the original question. Okay, so that's answered all of those questions there. Uh, the other question was how many firing trucks can you have per one of these and the answer is infinite as far as I can tell within reason and the other question was which units do you need Well, you need in the SA6 a search radar and you need in the SA6 a launcher that's it okay I shan't waste any more time on that let's delete it all off you go sir um one thing you'll find is that I'm not going to say it yet I'm just going to show you later right uh next we're going to show the SA11 and the understanding of the SA-11 is different. It's a completely different type of system. So first of all, let's just put the basic lot in. You've got a command and control truck, you've got a launcher truck, and a search radar truck. Um, now, 
I've just put four down by accident, so I don't know how I did that. So you've got your command and control truck. So this guy, no, sorry. Command and control truck, this guy um, is going to give us the, uh, in my findings, has been given, it gives us the ability for multiple launchers to operate at once. If I don't have the command and control truck, truck only one launcher in this group can operate at once. If I do have this, then, you know, if I put, well, let's put, let's just show it to you. Let's put an extra, again, I can put as many launchers as I want here. But again, let's just keep it sensible. So I've got two launchers. Without the command and control truck, only one launcher can engage me at once. With the control command and control truck, I can get both launching at me at once. I don't really know why that is, but I've just I've spent all day doing this, and that just seems to be how it works. So if you want that possibility, if you want everything to be able to fire at once, you need a control command and control truck. And obviously, this guy down here is the search radar. He's got the big flat face or whatever it's called that comes up and does the searching. Now, the difference with this, the SA-6, this guy was search and track. But in the uh, this um, thing here, the SA-11, that is search only, and these have their own track. They have their own track internally, presumably in this big dome here. I can't remember. Um, and that's another thing, actually. Uh, I did a video, me and Sherman, years ago, um, about Russian SAM sites. We didn't know what we were talking about at the time there, so it was a pretty shit video. Uh, but I want to do a new one now. We're learning much more about the SAMs, showing all of the Russian suites, where the antennae are. Uh, you can see you've got optical backup here for this guy here. I know all about this stuff now. I've got, you know, sack loss ability. Mm, but I'll have to wait for another day. If you're interested in helping out with that, let me know. I've already got some information come through about that that we're doing. Um, anyway, so let's continue. Now, roughly when uh, the, you get a suite that can have a command and control, launchers and a radar, just put all of them in. There's no reason not to put all of them in. And you'll just avoid things going wrong. You'll avoid glitches stuff like that so just put them all in and save yourself a lot of hassle but i've told you what they all do there uh, so without a command and control guy we will only be able to have one firing at once and without the search radar nothing will work you have to have a search radar um in a sa11 suite right um that will all work i don't need to prove that to you what we'll do now is show that we can have these guys off a long way now because um we don't need this oh god it's so hard to explain um Okay, so the link range of the SA-6 was um, 25 nautical. The link range of the SA-11 is a lot further, essentially um, within the scope of this search radar. So the search radar's here, you know, what is that? It's, it's a long way, 50 miles. So let's put these guys a nice long way away, let's say... Um, 40 miles because they've got their own track radar for the track they don't need to link back to this radar here so all they need is information from this search radar that i'm in the area and roughly where i am and then they turn on their own track radars and track me independently that's how the sa11 works one of the reasons why it's so dangerous so these guys here i can put as far away as i want from the search radar and the command bunker and the command guy doesn't have to be near anything he can be out in his open somewhere as well but i'd suggest just keeping him near this guy here um in fact why don't we just, just for fun. Oh, I can't move him about, look. I'll just leave him there. Um, sorry, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so these guys, because they're independent, other than an initial search uh, information, they, they can independent and they can get their own track. So they can be as far away as you want them to be within the parameters of the search radar. They do still need information from the search. They don't have their own search radar, okay? And a search, a search radar uh, is very different to a track radar. In how it works i know some planes and um uh, sam units can combine them but anyway let's just stop gabbing um should we go and get shot at now i think i've set that all up right now with the sa11 it takes a while to get warmed up i should have set them to red state really if you want them to be pre-warmed up set them to red state uh let's go and have a look you see the command and control bunkers getting his stuff ready uh this guy's independent launchers getting his uh uh whatever set up that's the uh search radar is getting his stuff set up It'll take a little while. Okay, I've already got a nails from one of the SA-11 units. Now, he can't do anything. So that there is one of the SA-11 uh, launchers. He can't do anything because he hasn't got search. Um, so, we're going to look at the search first. So, he's still not ready. Hurry up, chap. Uh, now, this gets even more complicated because these guys, although they don't have search, um, they do have optical. So, they might physically spot me in the sky with their optical backup. Uh, so just bear in mind that is a... Oh, he has his family with an optical... 
I don't know, look at that. He's found me without the search radar. I've yet to um, see that happen before. You can see the search radar isn't up yet. The search radar's just come out. So this guy has actually found me um, before the search radar's gone online. Uh, like I said, I've tried this about 10 times today and it's never done that. And the reason it's done that, if we just follow the log logic of how the system works, if we can find him. Where is he? It's, now, he doesn't have his own search radar, but what he does is you can see that uh, thing there, that the lens cover's just come off. That's an optical tracker. So I imagine we've got in visual range of this unit here. He's found me with the optical tracker, and he can then either optically track fire these missiles at me, or he can use his own independent track radar here, which he is using because I can hear it spiking me in the F-15. That's what he's done. That's why S the SA-11 is such a complicated suite. So in this case, because I flew so close to it, he didn't even need the search radar. If I was flying further away from it, like, like 10 miles away, he would need the search radar. Okay. I um, don't think I've got much to sh show other than that. And, um, yeah. And this guy must be slightly out of optical parameters for this guy here. And so he hasn't seen me. Um, this guy probably will see me now that the search radar is getting online. But we'll see. Let's just see what happens out of interest. Burners on. You see, this guy's uh, because this guy's probably found us through the search radar now rather than optical. And the reason he can fire at the same time as this guy uh, is because we've got the CC in there. It, I know it's awfully complicated, especially with an SA 11, because everything can act independently or it can act together. Uh, it shows the depth of uh, ED's programming here. It's pretty cool shit. Okay, um, don't need to show anything else there. And uh, I guess I could, one thing I could say there then is if this guy could actually be out there if we flew close enough to it uh, that he could pick us up optically, whatever that is, five miles, something like that. So that's possible. But for him to tag us with the search radar, he would need to be there. Okay, what else do you want to see? Um, okay, how about this? Uh, might get a little bit buggy here. Like that, shouldn't have done that. But let's try deleting, uh, delete that. I want... That CC, yep, and that there. So I've created a new command post. So I'm going to create a separate entity like that. And you see it's disappeared. It's just a little glitch. It is there. Now, if you create more than one CC, the other one disappears, but it does function. Um, so whatever. Um, so what I've done is I've moved one of these units over here and a search, new search radar, an offshoot of this one, and a new command post here. And we should see that this guy here is going to act independently, even though we're miles out of range of all this stuff here. Okay. So let's try and get that working. Whoopsie, get that working. Now, if you edit SAM sites enough, like I'm doing now, you can upset them and they will stop working altogether at that point. You know, you've just got to use your common sense. Hopefully this is going to work. I haven't played about with it too much. Yep, that's our search radar of that's him because this one is way out of contact. And we should see that search radar is going to pass search information onto him and he's going to be able to track us um, independently with his track radar, not as optical, once I get in a relevant range. Let's get that done, shall we? We try not to fly off in the wrong direction. See if he's tracking us yet. He is. So he's got his track radar in the, in the dome there. Uh, looking at us. He's got his optical on, but that's no use at the moment. Not at our range. Uh, as far as I'm aware. In DCS, they only work a few miles away. Um, and he is. That's a spike from that track radar and that. And so this, with this little offshoot, which is part of that group there, uh, all of these guys here work together as their own separate unit. Um, to uh, fire at me that way and again if I wanted I could put this guy right out here and he would still work with that unit there um, or I could put him right out here and he would work only independently through uh, a, an optical search and then a uh, independent track right that was complicated but that's the SA-11 done um, and this is the reason why it's so hard to kill an SA-11 site you could kill, for instance, the command and the C and C. Well, that means it will still work, but it just means that um, these guys here, these various unit uh, launchers, if there was like 20 launchers, it means they can't communicate with each other and liaise. 
and or you could kill the search radar and the command and control uh, bunker and then these guys will still all work but they'll have to find you they can search optically and track you independently all independently and you can kill all of these launchers as well and just leave one launcher and that can still fire at you independently so sa 11 is a real piece of real piece of work it really is very hard to kill very dangerous with a pretty good missile and uh, let's delete that before we bug the shit out of this uh next sa 10 oh god oh, i'm really hoping we won't have to do this sa 10 is a bit of a beast now sa 10 we've got six available units uh command post launch type one launch type two search radar type one search radar two type two and track radar um you must have the cp you must have the track radar and you must have the right combinations of these here uh you i believe there are three different combinations you can have i've never even bothered to learn them i just have them all because that's just the same logic why risk the sam launcher not working so i'm going to put that in here okay uh whoops now the logic for this goes back to a bit more like an SA-6. Uh, the SA-10 isn't as clever as the SA-11. It's more along the workings of a glorified SA-6 in that the actual units that fire the missiles here are not independent. Oh, whoops. I hate it when it does that. The launchers are not independent. They do not have their own radar. They just receive radio commands or commands from the radar stations and the command post. Um, and uh, they cannot track on their own so that means they have to be within trackable communication limits of the rest of the you know the the, the search radar the track radar and possibly the cp and that is the same as as the sa6 which are 25 miles so and as regards to how many can we have and all those other questions that the guy asked is everything's the same as the sa6 you can have as much as anything anywhere but just like i said don't be stupid with it because you'll kill dcs um, so I put these launchers, I've got one of each type of launcher, one's a short range, one's a long range, different type of missile, I never, again, I didn't learn, bother learning them, them both, they've got the numbers here so you can go and research them if, if you really want. So I'm going to put them within, whoops, that's being a sod, uh, within 25 miles, so let me just go and plonk them there, if I put them outside 25 miles, none of this will work, okay, well it will but I won't be able to get, you know, they won't be able to fire on me. So the SAM system won't work. And again, I could have 50 of these dotted around this 25-mile area if we wanted. Uh, <clears throat> double check we're within limits. 20 miles. Okay, I just need to prove to you that that will fire at me. And then we'll go and play some more. Again, the command post there allows, with the command post, it allows these guys to liaise with each other, with each other and have multiple of these launchers firing at me at once. You take the CP out... And what I found is that only one launcher will be able to launch out at once. That kind of makes sense. But that, uh, regards what else is unexpendable, the track radar, I've got to find them now. The track radar has to be in play. Um, now, you can take one of these search radars out if you're seed, and it will still work. It will use the other one, and vice versa. And that's another reason why I like to have both search radars in here, and both types of launcher. So that it's got redundancy there. So and we see this often in DCS. We'll kill the, kill the big bird or whatever. And, uh, oh, sorry, in game. And the other ones will still operate fine. Um, regards these guys' range to each other. Again, uh, I've had a little play. And it seems to be as long as everything's within 25 miles of the relevant thing that it commands. So, uh, for instance, if I've got a track radar. If I move the track radar, if I can get it. Then as long as that is within, that needs to communicate with the search radar. Without search, track can't find its planes. And it needs to, this needs to communicate with the, um, uh, so I guess we're talking about dependencies here, this needs to be within 25 miles as well as the launchers. Uh, so everything has to be kind of linked together in that kind of 25 mile bubble, 25 mile bubble for this all to work, okay? Uh, right, let's go and fly it, shall we? Here we go. Two searches up already, two search radars. One stronger signal than the other and, and track. It's tracking me already. Whopping great track radar this thing's got, where is it? Real mighty piece of kit, that is. Right. Are they firing at me? Yep, you can see these guys, although they're just less than 25 miles away, they're firing at me. And, um, it, like I said, if these are beyond 25 miles of these control units, or the control unit in question, which in this case would be the track, uh, so you could possibly have a daisy chain. I wonder if that would work. That's kind of a... I, I'm not sure if this will work, but purely just testing... The DCS limits to breakage. 
I wonder if we can have a daisy chain so the search can talk to the track and the track talk, talk to the uh, uh, missiles. So these guys here can't talk to the search. Now, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this does not work. I personally wouldn't have bothered programming this if I was DCS, but it's all good fun. Okay, let's get going. Searches are online. Doesn't look like we're going to get track. Oh, it's got track. We're getting track. Can the launchers work? They too, right. So you can daisy chain the command and ugh, the command. Now, interestingly, because the command post is now, you see the dependencies at work here. The search finds me and then shouts its information to the track the tr which, within 25 miles. The track then uses its track information to guide these guys here. But note how only one of these can fire at once. And that's probably because the command post here can't talk to the track uh, can't talk to the track and the launchers at once um because it can't talk to the launchers probably that's the kind of logic that we're seeing here in terms of these hierarchical dependencies okay mm. um i i don't want to use too much of your time up here what i can say is what i can do then is like we saw with the other units is i can can go and create extra um, full extra units within the same group so I could grab another couple of search radars a track radar another command post if I wanted to another couple of these Add them on and then drive them all the way out here 300 miles over here and this will function as its own SAM site and this will function as its own SAM site I think I've shown that enough in the SA6 and the SA11 for that Okay, right um, that's that done next I'm going to show what doesn't work and uh, I know wags will get angry at me but you know my job is to help people with DCS, and that does show things not working. Uh, that does include showing things that don't work. So, uh, SA2, uh, I'm going to put the fan song, my favourite sound of all time, the SA2, or maybe it's the SA1, I don't know. Or maybe it's the Nike Hercules. I do love Sam's now, getting into them. I used to know nothing about them, and still, I'm no expert, but they are seriously interesting. So, we've got a fan song and a launcher nice and simple what we're going to do is fly into that and find that it is going to shoot us down okay oh, hopefully come on fan song oh it's already broken look oh, so frustrating i think that's broken again Yeah, you can see I've put a perfectly valid fan song down. Oh, sorry, SA2. And I could do the same with an SA3. I'll show that that doesn't work either. Um, and they just won't work. And I'm... I could do any place in this map. And they just have stopped working. And that's because... The reason is because I've been playing about with other SAMs um, on this particular mission here. To get them to work, what I could... What, the only way to get this to work now, even with a fresh SA2 or SA3, is to shut DCS down to Windows, start it up again, and then suddenly these will start working again. Again, as soon as I start playing with SAMs and moving units around, the SA2 and SA3 will stop working again. The only way to get them working again is to shut DCS down and start it up again. It is, you know, I think we can officially call that a bug, right? I don't think I'll get in trouble for saying that. Um, and just to prove it to you, an SA3 will be the same. So, you know, delete it properly, put a new one in, and do a track there. I'm going to put a launcher there. And this is, like I said, it's been about six months I've not been able to use these units. So we've got an SA3 uh, track. It's only, how many units does it have? It's two units. Uh, launcher and a track. Search must be in the track. Okay, and what I'll do is, just to show you that even on the kind of, um, kind of legit terrain, if you like, it still doesn't work. And even if it does, it'll break a few minutes later. So that's a legit SA3. Off we go. Uh, I mean, there may be, a, whatever this problem is, there may be a way around it. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, you've seen me put them in, you've seen me put them in properly. And like I said, the solution is you just kick back to Windows, restart DCS, suddenly everything just starts working again. So that's a thing. And then you edit them, you, you move that launcher somewhere, it will stop working again. Back to Windows, it'll start working again. Spent many an hour trying to figure out what was wrong with that. Um, it would be nice if that could get fixed, please. Uh, and you can see you've got nothing. Yeah, I'm right over the top of it. Uh, so that's that. 
Um, now I could restart and uh, the computer and I could come back in and show you that it works but I think you take my word for it by now um, and I don't particularly want to do it because again as soon as I start moving these about even once I've got it working it will just go wrong again and they'll stop working I just have to keep reset my computer honestly I just say stay away from the SA2 or the SA3 until we get fixed if you're going to be messing around with stuff like that when I have managed to get these working then the logic seems to be similar to the SA6 you've got your 25 mile radio uh, link range um, and the logic is the same as the SA6. Okay, that's that. Oh, I'm desperately running out of time as ever, so I've got to hurry up. So um, let's try the NATO ones. What I need is... I'm not going to say it. Okay. What I need is uh, well, I need a rich backer to come and pay me a wage for this so I can do it full time. It's so much easier. Not going to happen, but we can wish. Hawk! At Hawk site. Um... I don't know. I don't get to use NATO sites. I very rarely get to use them. Haven't had a chance to have a look at them. They're obviously going to be the same type of logic as the Russian ones. Um, now, because of that, I don't have a full understanding of what these you, units can do. But why don't we have a look at, you know, a bit of logic. Work it out. A sea war. Well, okay. I already have no idea what that is. Um, that's a launcher. Obviously, that's a dependent launcher. So that uh, needs to communicate with the guys by radio. That's going to be your command post. For the, it will do the same thing as the Russians. That's going to be your search. So we have a track, and that's going to be a track. So the only one I don't know there is the seawall. Um, I wonder if that's an optical track, a backup optical tracker. That would be interesting if it was, wouldn't it? How interesting. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm expecting the same. There's only one type of... Uh, in terms of quantity of units, I'm sure it's going to be exactly the same. You can put as many units as you want there, as many launchers. There's no limit of launchers per um, uh, uh, track or search radar again that's how it seems to be with the Russians I'm sure that'll be the same here so let's do some best best basic tests let's get a, let's get a um, the launcher if I can find it have I got it there it is and let's put it uh, within 25 miles I have to be a little bit careful here we've got undulating terrain and I haven't tested LOS yet so let's put him 80 miles in fact I think I will move them into the um, Back into the flat, it just eliminates any uh, corruption possibilities. So we've now got him at 17 miles. That's going to give that a boot. And my prediction is it will work because of the logic of the, of the other sounds that we've seen of uh, dependencies. Power on. Okay, I've got a whole bunch of radars there. I haven't got my track IR on, so I can't see what they are. I can just say, I can see a search radar and a Hawk track radar there. I think that's what I'm seeing anyway. Track, tracks found us. Now we'll just see if it shoots us. Yeah, perfect. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to move this guy out of range because it's a dependent um, unit. It needs to be able to talk to these guys. And I'm assuming it's got the same Russian 25 mile stipulation for that. I'm going to assume that it will no longer work. Let's see. Oh, it's working. Oh, look at that. Okay, so we've got a difference. Uh, we've got a longer link range, dependency link range in the Hawk. Oh, I really wasn't expecting that. First thing is just double check that this thing hasn't got any radar. It's definitely not got any radar on that. What a cool looking missile. Um, there's no antennas there. There's no optical. There's nothing. So it's definitely ra radio link. Uh, okay, so in that case, we've got to test out what the range of the NATO stuff is. Uh, in terms of dependent link. Uh, why don't we try over 50 miles? No. Well, it's obviously pointless having it outside of the track radar range, which is... Oh, God, I don't actually know that one there, question mark. Um, so, to be honest, there's not really much point of pushing it any further because we get outside the track radar range. So, um, why don't we try daisy chaining again? Again, this is all a bit stupid, but it's a bit of fun. So, the track radar, is, we believe, is what's going to be actually sending the track info. So, if we have this guy within a sensible range there, and this guy within... Uh, well, it has to be within search radius, otherwise it's pointless. Search, I think that's main search radius. So, 16 miles away makes it about 40 miles away. So it seems that the NATO have a have a longer radio link in terms of dependent launchers. Like I said, there's no point of testing. It's extreme because once you're outside of the search radar's ability, then nothing works. Well, yeah, nothing works within extreme range. So. Um, it may have something to do with that guy as well. I don't know what he does and I haven't got time to check. Off we go. 
Doesn't look like it's going to work. So the daisy chaining doesn't work. At least we don't think it does. Nah. That's upset it. Okay. So for the hawk, we can't daisy chain, but what we can do, um, probably just because I don't fully understand the units of this system, what we can do is have this guy, the launchers, pretty much anywhere within the search radii, search radius uh, of up to 35 miles, I think I tried it. So um, that's a very powerful system. Even That's a better radio link even than the, uh, the S300. Couldn't get the S300 to link above 25 miles. Okay, um, amount of units, almost certainly you can have as many as you want, so I don't think we need to test that anymore. Um, let's just see if we can get a, um, a kind of subunit thing going. You can see the command post. Oh, no, it's there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an... I still sort don't of know what the seawall does, but create extra seawall. We're going to create an extra command post. Create an extra search radar. Create an extra track. Where did the track go? There we go. I'm going to plot these over here somewhere just to check it does work independently per se. Uh, like I said, the command post almost almost certainly is going to work the same as the um, uh, as the Russian type command post. Not sure what the seawater is and the track and the search radar are self-evident. You do we always need a search and a track of one form or another. Okay. Launch it there. Just grab another launcher. That's not what I asked for. What I want is another launcher. Thank you. Grab this launcher. Bung him over here. Let's see if these guys can work as a, their own separate little unit. Look. If he goes, sir. Yeah, you can already see the radars are up. And it almost certainly is going to work. I hope so, anyway. Come on, work. You son of a gun. Five minutes. Not going to track me, is it? And at this point, you never really know if it's because I've upset DCS putting so many SAM sites down. It's, I found it does do that. <laughs> okay, it's clearly not going to work. That's frustrating. It seems that we've got quite a big difference in how these NATO SAMs work to how the Russians work. So it seems like with the uh, NATO, at least a Hawk, you can't have a separate system kind of bolted onto the side. Just check everything's there. We've got the sea war, we've got the search, we've got the track. Oh, I put two sea wars in by accident. Dickhead. Let's change that sea war to a PCP. I know it's disappeared, but it is still there. Launch. That's not a launcher. That's a search. That's a track. That's not a launch. That's a sea war. And that's moving him for moving him in for, just for extra security. Let's try that again. Yep, it's tracking fine. It was just because I didn't have the sea war in. Uh, sorry, it's because I didn't have the PCP in. So this one does need the hawk. It looks like it does need the command post as a separate uh, shoot-off system. For whatever reason, it's getting a bit beyond me at that point, but um, probably because we've got more than one uh, launcher in this whole unit, something to do with that. So if you're gonna make an offshoot, probably in the Russians as well, like this, make sure you've got a command post in there. Um, that may be one of the uh, uh, main reasons why you should have the command post, actually. Okay, so you can create a separate, separate little enclave like that. Okay, nothing else to go on, otherwise uh, follow other than what we've shown there, just follow the logic of the Russian set, um, and we're good. Let's quickly get the Patriot. Apologise for having to rush so much, but that's just how life is at the moment. Um, right, this looks even more complicated. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to figure this out. We've got him. We've got an ECS. So we've got a whole different bunch of units for one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's only with one launcher. We've got a, let's go back to the beginning, AMG, no idea, absolutely no idea, would guess command post, but I don't know. We've got an ECS, no idea. Jammer maybe? Electronic countermeasure suite? Not sure. A Patriot EPP? <sighs> don't know. Power system, something like that. Uh, we've got an ICC. No idea. I've got the launcher, which looks non-intelligent. Wow, that's a piece of kit, isn't it? 
doesn't look intelligent to me, or doesn't look um, uh, independent, but I'll stand to be corrected, they look like just power units. And the search and a track radar, which is a search and a track radar. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, again, I'm pretty sure I could put as many as these different types of units in and as you like, and it would work. And I would suggest having all of them because like, like we've found with the command post, things just stop working if you put uh, command posts in at least to a limit. Uh, let's check the usual stuff out. Let's check the range of the launcher. Uh, what I'm going to do is add an extra two launchers because why not? Let's check a rough range. It looks like a big range set. Let's see if we can get this thing firing over uh, kind of 25 miles. Put one within 25 miles, one without. There's a logic test. Okay, whoops, I just realised that they are search radars and not bloody uh, launchers. Now they are launchers. And we've got everything here still. Okay. Let's see what we can achieve. Get one of these guys firing at us. Really not, to, not sure what to expect with this. We've got a uh, Patriot. Got a track. Oh, <laughs> look, he's already shot me. Wow, that was efficient. So this guy here, who is independent. Let me check his independent. Yeah, you can tell he's independent because we've only got a single track. Was, again, NATO seemed to have a longer radio link than Russians at 32 miles and just out of interest to see how far we can push that how far we can push that out shall we it'd be amazing to have these about 50 miles away 60 miles let's try that I oh, don't believe for a second that worked but let's try it a bit OP if it is I think okay off we go Jesus Jesus look at that this guy's 60 miles away that shows how big these uh, Hawk and Patriot radio uh, dependent radio links are. That guy's tracking me from 70 miles away, and that guy's shooting me, and it's 60 miles away from the guy that's talking to, which is the track radar. So pretty much with a Patriot, you can have as many of these launches as you want, as long as you've got the, the track radar and whatnot, and you can have them within the boundaries of whatever that is, probably up to about 90 miles, which is just ridiculous. So you can have a track radar in here and just dot the sam the actual launchers all about here. Amazing system. Um, everything else is pretty much going to apply. I have run out of time, sadly, so I'm not going to be able to put a separate enclave here. I can almost certainly guarantee, as long as we duplicate that lot there in the same group and put it about there, it will operate as its own enclave um, and it will talk to its the various units under its jurisdiction. And if it shares jurisdiction, um, if one of these um, SAM launchers shares a jurisdiction with that enclave and that enclave, I don't know what happens, but I've no doubt it'll probably just choose the uh, the most relevant enclave. I think I've answered that question several times over. I don't need to go into it anymore. I'm afraid I don't have time to look at the Rapier or the uh, Roland ADS because uh, and search rate. I've, I've got to get other things, start getting other things done. Um, I hope that's answered what you wanted um, to see. In fact, there's one more thing. Let's just check the line of sight. So we're going to have this guy in here. Oh, this is going to be really hard to... Actually, it's going to be harder to do than I think. No, it isn't. I'm going to put him there. Okay. And I'm going to put the launcher behind a hill. So these guys are still within range to work. But they are in this little valley look. Just make sure they're there. Uh, they're behind a hill, and they're still within the radio link range. Let's um, just see if that radio link has line of sight or not. And then I think we've answered everything. Oh. Okay, off we go. Got Patriot. Yeah, it's not. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it appears that these guys here don't have line of sight to him, which is a really well modelled. Kudos to Eagle Dynamics to get, you know, I wouldn't bother doing that. Um, it needs to have, be able to send a radio uh, to this guy to um, simulate that. And because, uh, you know, and so essentially it just treats these as non-units. And therefore the only thing it's got is that. 
and therefore it won't track me until I'm super close. Just check everything looks right. Yeah, a lovely open space. They could easily track me if they wanted. Uh, that's it. I've not got really anything else to say. Yeah, you can see he's like, searching and tracking me there. Um, I hope that was useful. I hope that's answered your questions. And uh, go and do some serious samming. See you later.